I have my whorl here, sort of a funnel cloud of points. And I want to use this to illustrate how you can start to use divided surfaces to think about point collections and point organizations in Revit and Vasari. So if I if I examine this a little bit, we're going to see that these are in fact just points that are part of a divided surface. And you can see the divided surface properties over here. So I can select these things and then I can start manipulating things like how densely packed the numbers are. Change this to 36. We'll see that the density of the points becomes much greater. I can make more lines of swirls by changing another grid number like that. You can see I just doubled the number of elements in my whorl. And I also have some parameters hooked up to this thing to add to the twist of the whorl. So I can make it much greater and apply that. We're going to see a very tight knot here. Or if I undo that, I can go back and make it much looser by defining it just at a much lower number. This is an angular twist that happens, and I'll show you how that get, gets put together in a minute. So this is much more open. So just to go back to where we started from here, I've got a few things turned off for visibility, one being uh, the form and another being some annotation categories, um, just reference lines and reference planes. So we see that we've got sort of a lot of sort of rigging underneath this whirl. So I'm going to go and I'm going to delete some more elements. I'm going to delete that one and delete that one. And we can see that basically this whirl is made up of a solid piece of geometry, a solid funnel. And I can also delete that to show you the underlying logic for that. And basically it is just one, two, three, four, five uh, circles. And each one of those circles has a radius uh, defined. Or actually, the radius is, is just manually defined, uh, but there's an angular rotation that's sort of a parameter in here. And you can inspect this file later on just to take a look at that. But the basic idea is that my point collection is based on an underlying solid piece of geometry. So if I just take my solid and ignoring the parameters for a second, because you don't really have to have them for this, then I go create form. I have the basic geometry for my my system and I can go and I can I can make some adjustments to how high it is or I can adjust things like uh, where's my control point for this I can adjust the radiuses of, of each piece but in the end what I want is I want some geometry to define a surface that I'm going to then go in and I'm going to divide. So if I tab into this surface and I tab into this surface and I divide them, whoops, I did the whole thing. I just want to do the surfaces, which is a tab to the face and a tab to a face. So I divide it. Now, I don't, I'm not really interested in looking at my form element anymore, so I'm going to go to Visibility Graphics. I'm going to turn off form. And actually, you know what? I don't even need any of my annotation stuff either. I just want my points, and I just want my divided surface. So now you can see your basic sort of vortex here. And because Revit divides solids into two pieces, and this is just sort of a standard thing. It's actually two divided surface, one and two. But for the most part, I can manipulate them together. Um, if I select one, I can go in and I can just turn on nodes, turn off UV grids. We start to see the points. Um, oh, I'm going to do that also for this side. So surface representation, nodes. And you can see already that we've got our, our point collection coming together. The, these point-like elements that are on divided surfaces are called nodes. Um, if I go in here and I change these sorts of numbers, I can start to define what my whorl looks like a little bit more. And I can define how dense it is. And this is all defining what the underlying grid is like. And now I can also go in, and because it's divided surface, I can replace 
right now it has no pattern. I can go in and I can use uh, a loaded family and then I can have it actually defined by lines or whatever other geometry I want this thing to end up being like so. And then it still has those same underlying controls, you know, whether or not I want them to be lines or, um, you know, a bunch of chairs, whatever you want. So there I go, change that to six. I get a lot more lines in a moment there. And because I defined my whirl with a bunch of parameters underlying it, I can also go in and do these manipulations on the same geometry. That's still based on sort of a, a collection of uh, intersecting points or grids. It just takes a moment to regenerate. And there, I get sort of more of a more of a twist to my whole element. 